Before we go over the topics I'm going to cover in this video, I just want to make a quick statement. If you're trying to make big power and your car has a returnless style fuel system, especially if you're using a turbocharger or a supercharger, you probably want to convert over to a return style fuel system. So in this video, we're going to cover what is a returnless fuel system, what is a return style fuel system, why would you want to convert to a returnless to a return style? And how to convert from a returnless to a return style. So first of all, what is a returnless system? A returnless system is a somewhat simple fuel system in the fact that it only has one line running from the gas tank all the way up to the fuel rail. Now it is a little complicated when it comes to how the fuel pressure running through that single line is regulated. Since oftentimes you have a fuel pump well, obviously you have a fuel pump in your gas tank, but in this fuel system setup, the returnless style system, you might also have a fuel pressure regulator located inside of your gas tank. You might also have some type of computer in your car regulating the voltage to your fuel pump in order to modulate and control the fuel pressure. There's also other systems that sometimes cars have, such as systems that maintain a certain amount of fuel pressure in the rail even when the car is off so that your car starts up very easily. So overall there can be some complications here but that one line running up to the fuel rail is one thing that is simple. Now in a return style system you have two ports on your fuel rail signified by these two little knobs right here in my diagram. Your feed line in this scenario will almost always have a filter, mainly because in a return style system, there's a lot more fuel running through the system. Since excess fuel is bled off by a fuel pressure regulator, oftentimes located on the fuel rail or near it, and then returned back to the gas tank. So unused fuel is actually cycling through the system still, and more fuel is being pumped up to the fuel rail than what is actually needed by the system. So because of that, the fuel filter is often needed in the system. Let's talk about the fuel pressure regulator real quick, since it is one of the components that you need to add to your fuel system if you're converting from returnless to return style. And a fuel pressure regulator basically has a port on it where the fuel goes in from your fuel rail, return port back to the gas tank. You also have an adjustment screw to set your fuel pressure. And one very important part about this fuel pressure regulator is it has a vacuum or boost port. Remember how I said in the beginning of the video that if you have a boosted application such as a turbo or a supercharger, you probably want to convert to a return style. This is the reason because you can hook up your vacuum or boost line to the fuel pressure regulator. What this means is that when your engine is under boost, your fuel pressure regulator will increase the fuel pressure. This is very important because your combustion chamber is pressurized when your car is boosted. So you need more pressure to squirt the fuel in, and if you don't have that additional pressure, your fuel injectors won't be able to overcome the additional pressure in your combustion chamber. You can also hook up a gauge to the fuel pressure regulator. Not all of them have this port, but most of them do. This is especially helpful for if you're setting the fuel pressure with the adjustment screw because you can see in real time as you adjust as opposed to something that you would hook up when you need it. Now, let's talk about converting from a returnless to a return style. I know there's a lot on the screen right now, and there's a lot of big numbers because to buy an off-the-shelf kit, it's often pretty expensive. This one being the cheapest down here, but I've seen kits, you know, upwards of $2,000 like this one over here. Note that these don't even include a fuel rail, so that would probably be an additional expense. Luckily, it's not too complicated to build one of these kits yourself. So let's talk about how you would build your own returnless to return style kit. First of all, you need to find a way to add the return line to your system. 
And this will vary based on your fuel pump hanger and your gas tank and all types of different things, but it's not something that you should overcomplicate it. You just need a port that literally dumps the fuel back into your gas tank. There's other solutions where you can drill a hole through your gas tank and use this like crush style washer. And this guy pretty much just bolted a port right onto his fuel tank. You could also weld one on there or probably use some type of high quality JB weld or glue or something like that. So this isn't something that really needs to be overcomplicated. You just need to find a way to get the fuel back into your tank. And you do need to make sure this is on the top of your gas tank. Hopefully that's obvious. Next will be the lines. I have AN lines here because that's what I think are the best solution. You could obviously use a rubber line, but it's not going to be as durable. And then you could also use a hard line, but it's kind of going to be a pain to make a hard line. You're all because you're also going to have to make a return line in a hard line. But if you have that skill set and you want the most durable solution, then I would say go for it. But I would recommend AN lines. Now, AN lines are not cheap. Just the lines will probably run you 100 to 200 dollars and that would probably be for a dash 6 feed dash 4 return if you want to go like with a dash 10 feed um, and a dash 8 return and you have like a real high horsepower build then it's going to be a lot more expensive but honestly if you need something that big then <laughs> you probably shouldn't be that worried about how much it costs because your fuel system is going to be well over a thousand dollars including pumps hanger lines and everything involved fittings are actually more expensive than the lines they are aluminum fittings they range from 100 to 300 dollars and this once again dash six dash four fittings is what i'm estimating for and the reason for this range is because straight fittings are about 10 to 15 bucks but the angled fittings are much more expensive so if you have a lot of angles like these 90 degree or these or like a 45 degree then it is more expensive one other thing I should mention is these fitting estimations are for PTFE or high flow fittings because that's what I think you should be using on your fuel system. And if you want to use a cheaper fitting that is not high flow, then you can definitely save some money here. Now tools, there's a whole slew of tools that you can buy for AN lines such as like vice jaws. So they hold the lines while you're installing them onto the fitting, or sorry, they, they hold the fitting while you're installing them onto the line. Wrenches, which are aluminum, so they don't mar the fitting. The vice gels are also aluminum. And then there's also cutters for the line because if you end up using like a cutoff wheel or something like that, you can get debris inside the line. So it's really preferred just to use a cutter like the one shown on the screen. Next will be a fuel rail. So if you're converting, you would need a fuel rail that has a feed port and then an exit port to run to your fuel pressure regulator and this is for a four cylinder and then we have a v8 fuel rail down here as well and this has a feed and then although it doesn't have a port for the return it does have a blocked off bung here so you could just unscrew this and then screw on a fitting for the return and fuel rails are typically you know 100 to 300 dollars obviously there's some extremes here Maybe you can get an eBay rail for 50 bucks. Maybe you can get some insanely, you know, polished billet rail for $500. I don't know. There's always extremes to it, but I would say the average rail is about 100 to 300 bucks. And then fuel filter. Not something you really need to overcomplicate. There's tons of good brands out there. Aeromotive, Radium, AEM, just to name a few. About 100 to 200 bucks. And then the fuel pressure regulator. Once again, a bunch of good brands out there. Aeromotive is one that I really like. Um, AM also has some great fuel rails. Radium obviously is an, an incredible um, company for all types of fuel system supplies. And I would say one to $200 for your fuel pressure regulator. So that's all the components. I would say you definitely need to budget at least $1,000 for your fuel system if you're doing this conversion and you want to do a high quality conversion. Obviously, there's going to be an extreme if you have a super high horsepower build and you need dual fuel pumps you know the whole thing then you're looking at well over a thousand dollars but for the average conversion i would say a thousand plus is a good estimation and just real quick is an overview of the system you have your feed line coming from your gas tank you want to have your fuel filter somewhere along the feed line 
the closer to the rail, doesn't really matter where it is. And then you have your aftermarket fuel rail with the two ports. You have a line running into your fuel pressure regulator and then you have your return line back to the gas tank. So it's actually pretty simple. Not as simple of a diagram as the returnless system, but you get a lot of benefits here with the return style. And once again, the main benefit will be if you're running boost, you can hook up that vacuum line and set that fuel pressure up at the engine bay with the adjustable fuel pressure regulator. And you can ensure that while you're under boost, your fuel pressure will be sufficient and you have a much less chance of leaning out your engine. So hopefully this helped explain the difference between the two systems, how you would convert. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment below. I typically answer all of the questions in my comments. Luckily, this is a small channel, so I'm able to do so. See you guys in the next video.